welcome back to another muscle fishing video. Today we're out on the Sib. It's been a long time since we were out. I'm taking my dad out for the first time ever. We've been meaning to get out for like over a year. Um, we're going to unload the boat really quickly so we're not in everyone's way here. And then we're going to go and park the car and trailer uh, somewhere else. Look at that sea today. Beautiful flat calm. No anchoring today. We're just going to drift around and see what happens. But um, we're going to set this up and uh, we'll get out there. <laughs> Right, we're at our mark now. We're just setting up. Um, these are the lures, quality time fishing tackle. It's a bit of a tongue twister have sent me. And I'm gonna put the link down onto these. Look how wicked these lures look. These are slow pitch jigs. Now these are, this is a herring, I believe. Um, we'll connect that up. And the idea is, is you jig it up and down. That goes up and as it goes down, generally speaking, that's when the pollock, the bass will come up and smash it. And then as you lift it, that initial lift, that's normally when it, when it, when it hooks and you'll feel the bite. So we're gonna be fishing with those. I've got 100 gram and I've got 200 gram. The other ones they sent me is a mackerel, which is what I'm gonna opt for today because that's what should be in the water. I haven't got a fish finder on this uh, boat yet and you really need to um, get a new transducer and then I'll, we'll have one. Look how wicked they look. Absolutely cool. Now, they're stickered and then they're laid on with plastic so they make it last a bit longer. They're, they're so cool. I absolutely love the look of those and I can't wait to try them. We, I'm hoping we're gonna get some bass on those today. Hopefully. That's the idea. I'm gonna get my dad set up on some feathers just because he's first time out and it's easy fishing. Uh, and then I'm gonna show you how to slow pitch jig and what we can catch on these wicked, wicked looking lures. Right, so I'm just resetting the drift. I've got Navionics up on the phone. We've set up, we're ready to go. My dad's got sabikis on and I've got those lures. Just gonna go right into the middle of the bar and, uh, and give it a go. Right, we're coming up to the ledge now and I'm just uh, setting up my slow pitch jig. That's the jig, all connected up. We've connected it with just a little clip. We're gonna drop that down to the bottom. And as soon as that hits the bottom, we're just gonna jig it nice and high up and down. We can try different bits of the water. That's hit the bottom now. I'm just gonna, we're coming up to the rough water now, Dad. Yeah. You can see where it's kicking up. That's where you really wanna focus the lure because all of a sudden it'll drop off. And if you're not in contact with the bottom, you will lose gear. So I'm gonna keep jigging this up and down and let's try for a bass. Right, I've just lost a fish because um, I was faffing around oh, with... Come it's come off. No, keep winding it. Just keep, just keep winding. Just keep winding. Mackerel, fantastic. Look at all them. Fantastic. This would be good for bait. Right, I'm going to wind in. I'm just going to get my hook out of the way. Hang on. Oh, we're not prepared to get fish. Right, fresh mackerel for bait. Fantastic. I was just thinking we're going to be drifting later and uh, I want to try for a tote on the drift, which is a little bit unique. But that's the mackerel down there. Right. Because there's loads of hooks, because they're sabikis, we'll right, bring it to me slowly. Ooh, yes, fantastic. There we go. Right, one's come off. It's gone in your foot. 
Right, so we've done some drifts, but um, unfortunately today we didn't get out quite um, early enough for the slack water, which is the best time for the jigs we use, which I've showed you, um, on the reefs out here. Um, the, the speed we're traveling at now is just too fast for effectively doing lures. Um, so what we're doing is we're just drifting on the bottom. So I didn't bring the anchor today. Uh, and we're just gonna just drift with baits. Might get a place, might get some bream. Um, yeah, we'll see. But um, today really was just to get Dad out here, get him used to some kit and um, take some rods out at the same time. And also to try and test out those slope at jigs. They look wicked in the water. On their day, they're going to be wicked. I can't wait to um, do some filming with those uh, throughout the year because um, they're going to be they're going to be really good. So yeah, I've got a rod there, a rod there. I'm just going to hook up a uh, mackerel which we've just caught. I'm going to flapper it up and get it down there to see if there's a tope down there. Right, I put a, a rod out. It's a tope rod. We're drifting, and that's just on a mackerel flapper, and that's just had a massive arc over. But it should, if for a tope, it should. Um, it should just it should just run, and it's on the ratchet, so you should hear it. So we're going to let it do its thing. I said ideally anchor will be better today, but it would be a perfect day for it as well. It's so flat, but I couldn't get an ordinary ring in time and I'm not holding up an anchor. <laughs> Can't be bothered. Once we get an ordinary ring, I shall do a video on how to anchor a sib. Um, very, very easy to do. And um, yeah, hopefully it will show you guys how to do it. But at the moment we're just drifting, bit of fun, just seeing what's about. <laughs> right guys, sorry we got none of that. Sorry we got none of that fight. Um, I was, <laughs> I was just, uh, I put this rod out purposely to try and get a tote. We're on the drift and we've got a tote, which is like, I want to get that rod straight back down with a big mackerel just simply because. Oh, right, I'm going to get a T-bar in a minute and do it properly. Look at that, look at that tote. I knew that was a bite. We come over a bit of rock and bang, on the drift. That rod's going now. We're going to have to, right. I've got to get this unhooked. Right. <laughs> Get it, and get it back. <laughs> Wicked. What beautiful fish. That's fine. Right. See you later. Excellent. Also, I've got. You got. Look, you got two. You got two fish on, Nigel. No, I have. <laughs> Pout in, and a mackerel. We're gonna send them straight down for for a tope. Right, guys. We just caught that tope, and I'm just gonna show you how to feather up um, a mackerel as a flapper. Uh, and what rig we're using. It's just a running ledger, a rig with uh, an eight ounce ball weight on, really, really simple. It's just literally running ledger and a bead. And then about three foot, 200 pound mono, and a big 80 meat hook, Cox and Rule meat hook. So to flap her up a mackerel, if you bring the camera over here, we'll show you. Chop the tail off about there. What that does, it stops it from spinning in the water. It's not what we want. And we're just gonna go up the body, up the spine on one side. Just like so. Other side, do exactly the same until you get to the bone, and then curve the knife over and run it towards the head again. Bigger mackerel's easier. I'm going to try a little one this time. And just take out the middle section with the spine. Keep that in there for possibly bailer. Leave all the guts and what, how to hook it. Get your hook. Go, I, 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 this is how I do it, plenty of different ways. Go through the head once, pull it all the way through, and then just where that little where the gill is, go through the gill towards the back wrap it in, pull it up tight. And that is perfectly presented tote bait. Uh, a conga bait, everything like that. Let's get it cast out and see if we can get another one. Right. Tote run guys, tighten up a little bit. Tighten up, take it off ratchet. Strike, you're in. If you'll know, it's probably a small tote. Um, oh, that's it, yeah, that's it, you're in, you're in. Might be a big tote. Sometimes they don't go, or it could be a ray. Could be a big ray. There's lots of fish out here. Here he is. Keep mine in, Nigel. Get it away from my feathers. That's it. Bring him up. That's it. Use all your power. That's it. Bring him towards me. Oh, let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Oh, has he come up again? No, he hasn't. I've got him, Jay. I want him towards me. Bring the leader towards me. I've got to remember to try and you've got to remember he's got teeth Nigel. Right. So I need it away from the sib. Hold that. I've got the leader. I've got him. I've got him. That's very acrobatic. Well done. First tope ever. Well done. That's my dad's first tope. Right, there's tope number two. Well done, Dad. Well done. 
All right, drop him back, get him back. Do you have a picture? Yeah, that's, that's it, there's a picture. Got him yeah, get, get him in. See you later, buddy. Right, we're just resetting our drift now um, over that sort of rocky patch I chose. Um, and hopefully we'll get, we'll get another tow. We'd have to get a bigger one. Yeah, we're just drifting over sand there and I thought, nah, let me tow there, but I want to be a bit nearer to the reef. Coming over some rough ground, um, I've re redone the boat as I was saying, and uh, yeah, we're just catching, catching some pout in. Oh, the hook, bloody heck! Um, just catching some pout in. We've got a bait down there for your mackerel is on, by the way. No, but I can't undo this. Um, so I'm using all these for fresh bait. So it's all going to go in there. If we don't use it, it's going to go for chum. So um, yeah, a bit chaotic as always, but um, yeah, we've got three rods out, and everything's everywhere. But I've just had a tidy up. We're going to catch some fish. We've got a big toe pond. I was winding in my feathers. He's taken the feathers. It's wrapped around Nigel's line now. Oh my god. This is definitely this is 200 pound. This is not 200 pound line. Hang on. Please come over. Oh, we're going to lose it, we're going to lose it. Just... Mm -hmm. We have to get him back a little bit, right? We always set it up again. We're going to have to set it up again, tough enough. Yeah. <laughs> He's so tangled, I'm trying not to lose him. He's so, they're so strong fish. I'm on bloody lure gear. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> Absolute mess. On the sieve, this is not easy. Right, hang on. If we lose it, we lose it. Bring. This. Pass me the rod. Forget the camera a minute. Hold the. Hold, take the rod. Take the rod. Rod again. Pretty sure it's this way. Take the rod again. And now I think we're free. Yeah. I think we are, you know. Woo! I don't know if we got this on camera. If I was recording, it would have done. My dad's picked the button. I don't think it's gone. But it doesn't matter. Is this what? what did you see that, Nigel? Yeah. The tote came up. We had a mackerel on the feathers, and it took the mackerel. There is so many here. We're winning. We're winning. We're winning this fight. This is a big tote. This is a 25 pound tote. But we're on extremely light gear. This could easily come off, but we, you can see it. You can see it. Oh, no. Yeah, I snapped snap my rod tip, but oh well, here's what it is. I've got another rod tip, thank God. Let's actually snap the rod tip. <sighs> Woo! He snapped a rod tip, we're in absolute carnage here. Purely based on the fact we've got too many rods in the water. Uh, well, it's not too many rods in the water, really. My dad, bless him, um, just did something slightly wrong. Um, look at that, boys. Oh, he's trying to bite me. Here we go. Get that, that, get that in. What a fish! Caught on a lure rod and sabikis. Oh they are mental. There we go. I don't know what I'm sitting on, but that is a tote of about 25 pounds. Well, say 20. Let's call it 20. Woo! Let's get back. Well done broken my most best rod. Well, we've had free tope. Um, we broke, I broke my favorite lot, Rua Lua rod. Hopefully I've got a friend who'd probably be able to fix that. Matt Gifford, um, he does amazing stuff. I'll tag his company and if he can fix it. If he can't, he doesn't get a mention. But yeah, Matt Gifford should be able to fix my rod tip. Um, we're fixing a reel now, and then I'm gonna try and um, sort ourselves out and try and get some more tope. That's free tope. There's gonna be some big tope out here today. Um, could be 40 50 pounders but i'm using this because i have forgot my flathead i'm just gonna undo all this and get rid of that bird's nest you've got a lot of newbie on board 
<laughs> right, I've just reset our drift. We fixed the reel after about 10 minutes of faffing around. Um, unfortunately, the rod tip I can't fix, but I'm gonna try and get tote on the lure rod. Haven't got a leader for it, haven't got leader material. We're just gonna have to risk it for a chocolate biscuit. Uh, use an extra long trace, um, and hopefully we'll be okay. Um, I'm gonna flap her up, a mackerel for my dad, um, and he can take the next uh, next fish. I'll get plenty of opportunities to catch fish. Uh, and ideally, I want to get my dad to get get a decent sized tope. He's had a nice tope. Um, what, did you, what, what did you think it was? About 15. About 15 pounds, yeah. Yeah, it probably was. Um, I had about 20, 25 pound fish. Um, so actually, it'd be nice to get, nice for my dad to get one. Um, wicked fun on lure gear. Um, I'm gonna, gonna send Shimano a message to see if they're gonna, if they could send me another tip. Um, so I might get Matt, Matt Gifford to fix it otherwise, but hopefully Shimano, if you're listening to my video, please give me a rod tip. I'll give you a mention. <laughs> that lure rod's my favorite, absolute favorite rod. It's a wicked rod and I've got a massive tope on it. So um, you never know. They might be kind and they might send me a free tip. Fingers crossed. You in? Put something on it. Oh. I feel like it's thrashing around there. Dad's in again. But is it going to be a rock this time or is it going to be a tope? We're just tidying up all of our gear. Um, I'm now fishing for tope with a lure rod and a 2000 size spinning wheel. Because um, that's, that's cuttlefish, right? Ooh. It's a cuttlefish. We want this for bait. Bring him in to me, but do not let him feel the air. That Does that make sense? It? Does that make sense? Don't let him touch, feel oh, the air. Sorry. Drop him, drop him in. All right, slowly, slowly bring him to me. I'm going to have to try and bring him over the side. Drop him. Right, cuttlefish won't let go of the bait unless they feel the air. Now, in a minute, I'm going to try and get him in. I'm not going to net, so we're going to struggle. Ready? Three, two, one. Ah! Oh! Lost him. Ah, oh, no. See what I mean? If we had a net, we would have got him. Doesn't matter. Right, I've just told my dad to wind back down again. I can see him. He's in the water and he's grabbed it again. So keep him under the water. I'm just trying to think what we could use. Hmm, I haven't got a net, stupidly. Uh, I know what I can do. Children, don't do this at home. Just grab it. If it's safe. Think all over me. Right. Was that fourth or fifth time lucky? About six. I think it was about sixth time lucky. Kept dropping the bait, dropping the bait. I said, Nigel, drop it about 15 foot. I'd see it and we keep winding. I thought, I cannot grab this fish. Or not, it's not a fish, not a shellfish. Um, but I thought, let's get, get the bait box. box. The bait's all over me lures. And it's in there. Bloody hell, look at the size of that. You... He's massive, delicious as well. Oh, Fantastic for bait. <laughs> so we're going to keep him in there. Send that down, mackerel straight away. Boom! Got about 20 mackerel on board already, and we're just gonna, I'm just gonna basically fill up the boat with them. I'm using a half broken rod, tip broken on it. My dad's on a live bait now, so I'm hoping he's gonna get a lovely big fish. This is why the tope are here, ladies and gentlemen. This is why the tope are here. They're for the, they are here for these bad boys. Oh, let's come on. Loads of mackerel, we'll just put them in that bucket, use them for chum for uh, the, the summer. Gotta go guys, gotta catch my mackie. Look at this guys, this is heaven for me. This is my absolute, you just fooled it. What there? It's all right, it's just, it's all right. Um, my dad's got a live boat mackerel on. And uh, look at what this, this mackerel spewed up. Loads of these, loads of these. Yeah, we're right on the water, this is that.
So we're just jigging on the what we call the horse here, and we've caught a pollock. Lovely little pollock. Jellyfish is attacking it. I put me down a soft plastic to try because he really wants a bass. I said, go, go on, go, go on, go on that, and you'll um, like a soft plastic, and you've got a good chance. There you go, a lovely little pollock. Lovely, really nice fish. Let's try again. Look at all the mackerel around us. I'm just slow pitch jigging. Um, see what we can get on the on the on the reef. They're absolutely everywhere. I've stopped mackerel fishing now. I should really carry on and absolutely chock her up, but it is what it is. I've got quite a few, so I'm sure I'll come out here and they'll be out here another day. Look at them all, absolutely everywhere. Jellyfish in front of me, the sea life out here is just beautiful. Absolutely wicked. Right guys, we're in again on the, on those lures I was just showing you. And it's a, <laughs> it's a pouting this time, not exciting, unfortunately. But it just shows. Oh, just shows they're going for it. Ooh, I'm gonna keep him for, well, now we'll put him back actually. He's a small one, we'll let him off. Right, I just lost a massive fish on the slow pitch jig. Uh, it must've been a massive bass. We've got mackerel all around us. Now the bass should be underneath, coming up. So these slow pitch jigs working on the bottom should work their absolute magic if the bass are there. As I said, the, the, take, the take I just had a minute ago, that would have been a bass, definitely. Right, we're into another fish on the slow pitch jig. What have we got this time? Oh, it's only a pouting. It's only a pouting, but it shows that it works. So there we go. The lure's doing the business today. <laughs> pouting, two pouting and a rass and a massive hit which unfortunately I lost probably because I've, the tip's gone on this rod so um, the action unfortunately isn't great alright, my dad uh, said I want to use one of them slow pitch jigs so um, as I said they sent me four so mackerel on that one so that was on the herring style one put that down there that was on the herring slow pitch jig so we've had a herring, a pouting and a rass and I lost a big fish, which was probably a bass. So we'll keep him and send it back out. Moving it That's pouting. That's pouting. Those slow pitch jigs are just bringing in fish after fish. Mr. Pouting. <laughs> Quite a pig, I'll let you unhook him. Look at this, absolutely bliss. It's eight o'clock now, we're, uh, we're gonna head in because my dad's got work tomorrow, I've got work tomorrow, and I've got to wash this boat down. It's got so much muck over it. It's got cuttlefish ink, uh, mackerel blood. <laughs> probably got a tote tooth in the hole or tube or something the way today's going with kit. We've had an epic day, we've had so many different species. We've had pouting, we've had taupe, we've had mackerel. What else have we had, Dad? Rass. Rass. I think that might be it. Cuttlefish. No bass. Five species, I think. My dad was desperate for a bass, but um, the tide stops. There's no tide at the moment, so we're not, you're not really going to get bass when there's no tide. Uh, and the spot we stopped off at the beginning, the little ledge, that fish is much better on a flooding tide and um, it wasn't flooding, it was ebbing. If you're ebbing, you want to be over towards Beachy Head. Anyway, look at this. We're going to go home now and get the boat sorted. So thank you for watching and tight muscles. <laughs>